we do not have time to look at the fullness. Jesus Christ reveals himself in the book of Revelation. In fact, the whole title of this book is the Apocalypso Jesu Christu. It's the unveiling of Jesus Christ. The book of the Revelation is, is God opening the window and showing us Jesus Christ. This is just the introduction. The whole book of Revelation is Jesus Christ revealing himself, fulfilling the word of God, becoming all the fulfillment of the promises of God. But let me just quickly show you the 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 seven different descriptions, at least. And we'll only get to see two of them this morning. But what did John see as he looked at Jesus Christ? John actually saw what Jesus was doing after the resurrection. And what he sees him doing in these verses is exactly what he was doing 60 years before when John walked around with him by the shores of the Sea of Galilee. What Jesus was basically saying is what the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday in the Bible, today in my life, and forever when I'm with him. See, he doesn't change. What did John see? Well, you might want to pencil these in your mind or even mark them in your Bible. But most of all, these are things we should hold tight to our hearts. But starting in verse 13, when John saw the risen Christ... The first thing Jesus does is he reminds us that he's human. See what it says in verse 13, one like a son of man. Jesus doesn't say, hey, I went to heaven. Now I'm all different. I'm I'm uh, unapproachable. I, I have become this this way, way beyond anything you can even comprehend. No, I'm one like a son of man. Think about it. The son of God became a son of man so that the sons of men to become sons of God. You see, God became man. And Jesus reminds us he forever is a son of man. Son of means characterized by. Jesus is 100% human. 100% divine. The only one like that. But Jesus, number one, reminds us that he's human. And that is because Jesus can feel my needs completely. Remember what it says in Hebrews? He can feel our temptations because he was tempted. Secondly, if you look at the end of verse 13, he has this robe and sash and white hair stuff. I mean, when you see that, it doesn't mean a whole lot to us. But immediately to John, he saw him as a priest. He's dressed just like a priest from the temple. The temple that had now been destroyed for 20 years. But John remembered those days when those priests came out clothed in this white with that special outfit on. He sees Jesus like that. And that reminds him that Jesus is praying for us, that Jesus prays for us constantly. Remember what the writer of Hebrews says? He ever lives to make intercession for us. We forget that. I mean, we, we worry that somebody forgot to pray for us. There's someone that never forgets to pray for us. Someone that prays for us all the time. Someone that prays for us knowing everything going on in our life, even the stuff we never really share. Jesus. So John was first reminding us that Jesus is human. And secondly, recording that Jesus is praying for us. Look at verse 14. At the middle, it says that he had eyes like a flame of fire. That was to remind us that Jesus is watching over us. He can truly see us where we are. Jesus can see me always. You know, I remember having little children that uh, when they were at a certain age that they never quite wanted you to not see them because they kind of became aware of the bad people out there that might steal them. And so I can remember many times in many settings from Disney World to, you know, the Walmart where the little ones would go just so far and then they'd look back. And if they could see me, they'd smile because they knew I was watching them. And then they'd get busy and doing something. And all of a sudden they'd look around and as soon as they could catch sight. It was okay again. Did you know that Jesus wants us to know that we're never out of sight? He never loses us. That that he never loses track of where we are, what we're going through, and, and what we're facing. Sometimes we forget that. Jesus is watching over us. Look at chapter or verse fifteen of chapter one there. It says he had feet like fine brass to us. I mean brass feet. Sounds like a stove or something, you know. I mean, what is going on here? It doesn't mean anything to us. But brass speaks of the fact of protection. It was the idea that, that they, were, they were having something that had been refined in the fire. And if you had, 
your feet shodden with brass. I mean, you could walk over rocks and you could walk over pointed things. You could walk over anything. It wouldn't harm you. And it was this idea of military footwork. And, and he can protect us. Jesus can help me any time. He is protecting us with those feet of fine brass. Right in the middle of verse 15, he had a voice like the sound of many waters. To, to John, who's out on Patmos, you could hear the waves for for any part of the island, those great storms that came up in the Aegean Sea. Uh, if you've ever stood next to uh, a great waterfall, we were recently by Niagara, and I mean, Niagara Falls, the whole ground vibrates. You can hear it everywhere from great distances, the sound of many waters. And what Jesus is saying is, my voice can be heard, and I, I want to comfort you. I want you to know that... The, you can hear me, that my voice is a voice that can comfort you anywhere. And look at verse 16 in the middle. His face was shining like the sun in his strength. Jesus says, I'm offering myself to you. I want your worship. I, I am one that am so, I, I am like the focal point. I mean, when people come out of the dark, they look up and they see the sun. And, and it just captivates them that, that they're out of the darkness. Jesus says, I am one shining like the sun in all its glory. You've been taken out of the darkness, the prison house of your sin. I should be your focus and I should be the one that you worship. Jesus offers himself to us. We can truly worship him everywhere. But I love, look at, at verse 17 right in the middle. Remember how John falls down like dead and Jesus, as it says there, laid his hand on me. You know what Jesus says? I'm reaching out to you today. In fact, a great study in the Gospels is to see how much Jesus did by touch. You know, he could have just healed people. He could have just gone, be healed. You know what he did? He went up to lepers and touched them. He went up to dead people and he touched them. He went up to those who were, were blind and he put mud in their eyes. He, he put his fingers in the ears of the deaf. Jesus touched people. Because we need touch. And what Jesus said is, I'm reaching out to you. I want to touch you daily. 